And this is just a, go, a quote from Dr. Shapiro at one of the annual conferences. And the goal of EMDR is to achieve the most profound and comprehensive treatment effects in the shortest period of time while, maintain, while maintaining client stability. Okay. So what else do I have in here? So when is it appropriate to do EMDR? When we've done a thorough history taking, we have a good sense of, of what's in our client's nervous system, we have a therapeutic relationship, and we've done our preparation work, including stabilization, teaching affect management skills, and, and our treatment planning. Okay. Okay. So what does an EMDR session look like? So when we identify a memory, what we do with it is we set up what we call a target. Um, and so that consists of an image. And so we ask our client, when you think of this incident, what's the image that represents the worst part of it? When you bring up that image, what's the negative belief about yourself? When you bring up that incident, what would you like to believe about yourself instead? A positive cognition. When you think of that image and those positive words, how true do they feel to you? And that's our validity of cognition. When you think about the incident and connect it with the negative cognition, what emotions come up for you? And we take a SUDS reading, zero to 10, how disturbing does it feel to you? 10's the highest, zero's neutral or not at all. And then we identify the physical sensations. And this is Francine's protocol, right? The way we set up the target, asking those questions about the image and the negative cognition and the positive cognition, that's the protocol she created. And so once we, we, we use that, that target setup to light up the memory network, and then I do eye movements that moves the disturbing material along the neurological pathways. And the way, um, the language that we use is always very general. You know, all, all that I mostly say is, what do you notice and notice that? And the reason why we do that is because, number one, I'm staying out of the way. His brain's doing the work, and I'm, I'm letting the wisdom of his brain process this memory. Um, and the other reason why we, we use that, those words, what do you notice and notice that, is that we want to keep our language general, right? Because uh, if I say, you know, what emotion are you feeling? You know, I, he may not be feeling an emotion. He's, he, he's thinking about something else, or maybe there's a body sensation. So, so we use those general words to check in, which is, okay, what, what's here now? How's he holding the memory now? And just that, again, that general instruction, notice that so he's free to notice whatever he needs to notice. Okay. I work with adults. So the majority of time, adults are not able to uh, go through a whole memory in, in one session. And, and when that happens, what we do is we just, we close down the session um, and we help them um, kind of put the memory away. We usually, you know, we teach our clients some kind of relaxation or affect management tool, and we, we help, we got, usually guide them through that just to kind of make sure, you know, if, if there's been a lot of activation, we kind of help them, help them re-regulate before we send them back out into the world. Um, and then when they come back in the next, for their next session, you know, if they're, they're ready and up for it, we just, we just go right back to the same, same memory. And, and their, their brain remembers where they are and, and what they still need to work on. So we just ask them to turn their attention back to the incident. What do you, what do you notice now? How is it held for you now? Notice that and start reprocessing it again. So with people who have multiple trauma, and I, I work with your kids with juvenile detention, uh -huh. so multiple big traumas. Right, right. Often. Um, so when you're doing this, is, does this teach them how to start processing other memories, or do you have to go through kind of so, with, um, with these kind sure. of Sure. That, that, that's a really good question. And so this, that's where treatment planning comes in. Um, I'm sorry, I, I'm not repeating questions. So, so what she asked was, um, does this teach clients to start processing other, other memories, or do you have to go through each, each memory? Um, one of the, uh, I guess you'd call it a, a principle of EMDR is that that the most efficient and effective way to work is with, with the earlier memories. So if at all possible, we want to work with the earliest memories. And um, what we find with EMDR is that there is a generalization effect. 
So we can take an incident and identify the worst part of it and all aspects of the memory clear out. But what we also find happens is that other related memories sometimes clear out on their own or greatly reduce in intensity. It's not about teaching people to reprocess memories, but, but when we, a lot of times when we target early memories, the later memories just kind of clear out as well, or like I said, just really reduce. Is there an average time that it takes to work through these things? It depends. It depends. Doris asks, is there an average time to work through these things? And so it, it, it depends. You know, a lot of it depends on, on the client and what their resiliency and ego strength is. It depends on how much trauma is there. You know, if, if it's very early childhood trauma, that, that tends to uh, be harder to repair. Um, if people grew up in situations where neither parent was safe or a good parent, you know, that also adds a, a later excuse me, a layer of difficulty. So, again, so I work with clients who there's a lot of big T and then there's also often a lot of the recurring mm -hmm. smaller trauma. So with that, do you start working on, like, because the smaller trauma usually happens earlier in life, the recurring stuff, and then there's this big T that's what's really disturbing them right now and things like that. Do you focus on the big T first or the smaller? Recurring trauma. So, like, kid grew up in an abusive or, um, you know, household, but then just recently got sexually assaulted. Mm -hmm. So, what she's asking is if you have a client that has big T trauma, but there's also a lot of little T trauma, you know, what do you work on first? And she gave the example of, you know, a child growing up in a home where there's a lot of little T trauma, but, but they were also recently sexually assaulted. Um, so with that, you know, with the recent assault, you know, a lot of times if there's a recent trauma and if it's something that major, it's so active in their nervous system, it's really hard to get them to put any attention back on that old stuff because, you know, this is right here. So in a situation like that, it would probably be addressing that, that, made, that big T trauma first and then putting some attention on the, on the smaller stuff. And you had a question also? I'm thinking this wouldn't really matter, but so as far as like doing this in Spanish? Yes, yeah, we have um, um, Spanish language materials available. So, so it would be best to be trained in Spanish, that way the phrases are similar in general, right? Well, we have um, part of, you know, part of what I, what I do is that um, uh, I'm on the training staff for a gentleman in Austin who, who does trainings in, in two of, two of our other facilitators, um, we call them the Vivianas because they're, they're both named Viviana and they're both from Colombia. And so um, as part of our training, you know, part of the EMDR training is we do practicum. And so, you know, you learn this and then, and then part, of the, part of the training is that you, you kind of practice on each other. And so what we've started doing is doing practicum in Spanish because, you know, what they talk about, you know, this, you know, for native speakers, you know, sometimes that's the best way, that's the best way to learn. Is, okay. Yes. Uh, it's not unusual in, like, for example, in cases of child uh, sexual abuse when they're very young to not remember any of the details. Mm -hmm. They just know something happened. Right, How right. Do you deal with that when their the memory is not there? Yeah, and so what she asked was sometimes when there's been very early childhood sexual abuse, they, there's not a clear memory. They, there's just this sense that something happened. And so, um, you know, it, it's not about, you know, sometimes people come to me and they're looking for EMDR because they want to know what happened to them, and they think EMDR is going to be some kind of, uh, help is going to help them re recover these memories. And, and that's not how it works. So. So what we work with is what they have, you know. So whatever sense they have that something happened, whether it, it's a body sensation or, you know, you know, just a, a piece of somebody's face or, you know, that's what we work with, right? And, and, and so, you know, sometimes I work with people who have memory like that and, 
and they say, I don't want to remember anything else. And, and other people say, I want to know what happened. And so what I tell them is, I can't predict what's going to happen. Sometimes, sometimes other pieces of the memory come forward, and sometimes they don't. You know, and so just to give them fair fair warning that, you know, if other information comes up, I can't I can't stop that from happening. And, and it's that's if the brain decides that's what needs to come up to help help this process through, then then that's what happens. The idea is not necessarily to try to discover what all the memory was. Absolutely, yeah. The idea is not to discover what all the what all the memory was. And you had a question. Uh, I imagine that well, of course, there's some plans. It takes a lot more time to gain digital trust. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So there, I imagine there's like degrees of experiences like you, know, you want to kind of see how they're going to respond with something that's not so important before you move into another experience. They, maybe they need like sure. a number of numerous experiences before you get to one of the yeah, absolutely. And so what he's talking about, what he said was for people who have that it takes longer to build trust in that therapeutic alliance, you know, you may not want to start addressing like, you know, the big major traumas that, that, that they've experienced, but start with smaller, smaller incidents. So ab absolutely, you know, working with something that something where they can experience EMDR and, and, and see how it can benefit them, but not address something that might be overwhelming to them. So a couple of people have asked about training. Um, EMDR is a 40, 40 hour training. It's held over two weekends. Typically the weekends are two to three months apart. So, so you learn information in the first weekend. We want you to go out and practice and then come back in for the second weekend and learn additional material. And you're also, 10 hours of consultation are re also required to complete the training. And so these are, are places where you can go to get trained. Um, full disclosure, the gentleman at the bottom, I, he's, the, he's the man I, I work for. Um, and so, but I put his name up there because I was telling, Robin was asking about training. And um, one of the, Rick um, is quite remarkable remarkable in, in his dedication to EMDR. And one of the things he lets people do is, once you have taken his training, um, you are forever and ever allowed to come back and audit at no charge, you know, just as a refresher or to help integrate the information. Even if you train at another, with another trainer, he still allows you to come and audit his trainings for free. And, and we've had people that have done other trainings and the feedback we get from him is like, oh my God, your, your training is so much better. So anyway, um, if you're interested in reading, this is Dr. Francine's book. Um, she also wrote Getting Past Your Past, which is more for the, more for the public. Um, I would, if anybody has an interest in trauma, I would highly recommend reading Dr. Dr. Vander Kolk's book. He is one of the foremost uh, researchers on trauma, uh, and this is a very, um, um, it's an easy to read book, but it's so it's so informative. So, oh, okay, I think I'm done. So, thank thank you very much for being here.